Well, good morning. Good morning or good afternoon. Yeah, wherever you are, whatever part of the country or whatever part of the world that you're in, I hope that you're really having uh, having a wonderful, wonderful day. Well, look, I know that your time is valuable, so Doris, if you're ready to get started, I am. What do you think? Most definitely, okay. yes. Okay. Uh, can we get the mouse to work, guys? Okay, there we go. Let's start off with this if we could, Doris. Yes, thank you is an awesome place to start. First of all, thanks to all of you, uh, business owners, managers, employees um, of all of the auto repair companies out there. We really appreciate your time, and uh, and we value that. Thank you so much. Yeah, we certainly do, and we certainly hope that we're able to hit a home run with you. And uh, in regard to the logo that you see up here, the good people at Jasper, there's, as many of you more than likely know, they're very dear friends of us. We really admire their people, their culture, their principles. They're really extraordinary people, and they were kind enough to put this all together. It was the good people at Jasper that I actually made this available specifically for you as a Jasper customer. So this is not uh, this is not out there in cyberspace. By that I mean this is broadcast is only going to those of you that are Jasper customers. So to our friends at Jasper, we'd like to say, say thanks so much for all of your support and for giving us the opportunity of presenting this content today. Yeah, yeah. What a what a wonderful company you guys are. Sure are, Doris. Okay, well how about this? Uh, for those of you that I haven't had the opportunity of meeting in the past, my name is Bob Cooper and I'm the president of Elite based here in San Diego, and I'm joined today by a dear friend of mine, a wonderful lady that works with us. I'm Doris Barnes. I am Elite's director of customer relations, and yeah, I, I have the pleasure of getting to work with this guy right here and the whole team here at Elite. So yeah, thank you so much. It's great to be here. Yeah, it certainly is, Doris. And how about this one? So a little bit more about our company. For those of you who may be new to us, uh, we are a company that lives by the principle of never putting money ahead of people. Uh, we always want to make sure that this is woven through and through for our organization. Any services we develop, anything that we do, this is always at the very forefront for sure. Yeah, well stated, Doris. And what we do, a lot of you that aren't familiar with us might be wondering, well, what the heck do you guys and gals do? Well, up on the screen it says, we help guys and gals just like you build more successful businesses and reach your goals while having what's really important to us, a really positive impact on all of your employees, all of your customers, and your communities as well. This is an industry that we know. We were all brought up, including Doris, this, this is in our blood, this industry, and we certainly know it really, really well, and we certainly know this content really well. So this is who we are. How about the objective today, Doris? What are we going to accomplish today? Okay, so what you're all here for, right? We're talking about recruiting, and uh, today we're going to share a number of proven strategies that you can use immediately to find and hire the industry superstars. That's what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and I think you're going to really like it. So let's talk about what you're going to learn today. There's actually going to be three different modules, one today, one a week from now, and one a week later. And in conversations with the good people at Jasper, we knew that this is a looming subject. We know that there's a lot of content that needs to be covered. So we decided to break it down into hunks. What we're going to do today on this session is we're going to show you how to create really attractive money-saving pay plans, how to incentivize the behavior that you're looking for for the guys and gals that work with you, and how to create a benefit package that will really better ensure that these guys and gals that you're bringing into your company are going to be with you for years to come. So that's what we're going to do today. And then how about uh, next week, Doris? Uh, next week's module, number two, we're going to be covering the best kept secrets that the industry's top shop owners use to find the industry superstars. This is where you guys are going to really tune in, right? Yeah. And how to connect with the stars once you've signed them. Um, in addition to that, we've got one more here, how to keep your pipeline filled with the best technicians and advisors in the industry. There you uh, go. That's what we're going to be into for module number two. Yeah, and, and module number three. Why don't you help me out with this one too, Doris? Oh, sure. Yeah. Happy to. All right. And then for our third module, which will be two weeks from now, uh, we're going to talk about how to use the elite method to interview like a seasoned pro and impress the applicants, how to use today's technology for online assessments, and how to perform reference checks in a way that will provide you with the valuable information you need to make the right hiring decisions. This is what we're going to be covering, guys. This is what we're going to be doing. So let's talk about how you can best benefit. First of all, please make sure that you're uninterrupted. Number two, I'm going to ask that you take really good notes. And by the way, when we say good notes, this is going to be recorded. You're all going to receive a link to this video, and it's more than likely going to be delivered to you. It will be delivered to you, certainly within 24 hours at the absolute maximum. So you'll be able to go back and watch it again. So if you're unable to take notes, relax, you'll get the video. And then it says mark your calendar for our next two remaining sessions. You can use the invite that you received today to log into those. You can use the same invite. You'll also be receiving reminder invites as well. And how about this one, Doris? 
and during the session today, simply submit your questions via the question panel. So you should have a little orange arrow to the right of your screen, I would imagine. And if you arrow that out, you'll, you should find an area there where you can type questions to us. We are going to make sure to take some time to answer what questions we can get to today toward the end of the webinar. So uh, do put those in as they pop up in your head, and we'll do our best to get those answered. Yeah, we're here to help you guys and help. And what about this one, Dora? Yeah, so this is that picture of that little arrow. See that guy? <laughs> you can also click it to hide that whole panel, that control panel there. If you want it to go away, if it's obstructing your view, that's how you would do that. Okay. So with that said, let's get started. Okay, let's do it. Let's take a look at module number one. Now, we put a lot of thought into this. We wanted to make sure that we're able to give you the 80-20 rule. We wanted to make sure that we're able to give you the essence, the most important content. And we both agreed, Doris and I both agreed, that we need to start with know what these guys and gals are looking for. If you're going to recruit the superstars, the first thing you've got to figure out is what they're looking for. And let's take a quick run through of what these things are that all of these rock stars are looking for. Number one, they're looking for a company with a great reputation every single time, huh, Doris? Yes, indeed. Yeah, got to have a good reputation. And if you're, and if you're recruiting, you may, make sure you talk about the reputation. If, let's say you're new and you're a startup and you don't have a lot of people or you don't have much of a reputation yet, make sure you talk about what you want your reputation to become, what it is going to become. There you go. And what about this one, Doris? A company with the right culture, absolutely. You've got to define what that should be, what you want it to become, and make sure to tell your applicants <laughs> about what that means to you. Yeah, amen. And but look at this one. Whoa. A company with the right people. So, of course, all great superstars that, want to, that you want to have work with you, they're going to look for leadership in you. They're going to look for a team of people that really do well together. A company with the right equipment, for sure. We've got to make sure that we have leading edge industry equipment that is up to date with technology in today's day and age. Mm -hmm. And a company that provides the right opportunities. They want to know what their future is going to look like. Are there growth opportunities? What's their future going to look like if they're with your company? So if you are looking to one day have multiple locations, what a great thing to share with an applicant that they have growth opportunities down the road, using that as an example. Yeah, well said, Doris. Well said. And lastly, guys and gals, uh, you need to provide a company that really have a company that really provides the right compensation incentive program. And one of the things, the reason Doris and I wanted to share these elements with you is the guys and gals that you're looking for, the rock stars, they don't need a J-O-B. They're looking for the right opportunity. They're going to be grilling you as much as you're grilling them. They're going to be very choosy about who they go to work with, and these are the things that they're going to be looking for. Now, one of the things that I've learned over in the business over the years is when you look to recruit people, uh, what most shop owners do is they do what other shop owners do, and they just try to throw money at people thinking that's how you hire the rock stars. And you know what? That's the furthest from the truth. There's actually six elements, one, two, three, four, five, six, that have to be in every great compensation and incentive program. We're on a limited amount of time, but we decided what we want to do is share the core elements with you, each one of those six. So, Doris, why don't we get started on that, huh? Number one is basic compensation. Yes, indeed. So we first are going to talk about the, just the basic stuff that you really need to have in place, and then we're going to get into what we'll call opportunistic income in a moment. And these are the things that most shop owners offer then, huh? Yes, absolutely. These are the things you need to offer. Okay. Uh, competitive base pay is the first thing here, you guys. So what does that mean? Well, if $30 an hour in your community is what a great technician can earn per flag hour, consider what you're going to start this person off at. Maybe they're going to be at $25 an hour with the opportunity to earn 30, 35, even 40, or what have you, if they, if they produce, if they can hit different markers in your, in your compensation and incentive plans. And maybe, not, and maybe it's not only just production-based, which we'll talk about more. Yeah, soon. well said. So number one, under basic compensation doors, they have to have, they have to provide these guys and girls with competitive base pay. Uniforms, absolutely. They're a part of paid holidays. Mm. You've got to make sure to have paid holidays. And here at Elite, we have, uh, we actually have eight here at Elite. We have the big six that everybody's familiar with. We actually have the birthday of the employee, and we actually have the day after Thanksgiving as a paid holiday as well. So these are the things that the rock star is going to be looking for every single time. Vacations as well, huh, Doris? Paid vacations are a must. You've got to provide those to your people. Consider what kind of vacations, how, how much time they're going to get based off of how many years they're with you. These are all very important, basic essential parts to your comp program. You know, sort of like oxygen, huh? Like oxygen. Yeah, yeah everybody needs these things. This is, these are the things that they absolutely have to, have to get from any employer that they're working for. Well days uh, or sick days, however you want to refer to this, we call them well days. 
um, the opportunity if they are ill to be able to not have their vacation time taken and be penalized for those. This is a really great benefit for your people. Yeah, yeah, you bet. Yeah, that's a winner, Doris. And how about this one too? And training. Yeah, so absolutely training, ongoing training, regular growth and development paths for your people. Uh, Superstar is going to want to see that you're going to invest in them and continue to allow them to be the best at what they do. So let's give you a, now. Look, we know that we uh, put a lot up on this, these bullet points. So let's just give you a couple of takeaways from this. Things that you're going to really have to consider when it comes to what we refer to as basic compensation. Number one, whenever you're explaining the opportunity to Larry, as we like to call him, you need to consider Mary as well. So don't be afraid to provide really good guarantees. And I've always struggled with so many shop owners that struggle with getting guarantees. They're scared to death that they're going to pay this guy a lot of money or this gal a lot of money and they're not going to produce and they're going to be stuck with the guarantee. That's not the case. Uh, if that's the case, you hired the wrong guy or you hired the wrong gal, number one. Number two, you don't have to keep them. You can let them go if they're not producing. you got to bear in mind that when that rock star is looking for an opportunity, if he already has a decent job, not a great job, but a decent job, and if you're uh, suggesting that he comes and works with you, if, if you're not willing to provide him with a decent guarantee, he might feel okay with coming to work with you, but his spouse or somebody else in his family might go, you know what, that's too much of a risk, and they're not going to make that leap. So you've got to believe in your company. You've got to believe in your abilities. This is why we're such a supporter of a having guarantees. And what about this one, Doris? Yeah, real quick, let me just make sure you guys understand. When it says when you are explaining the opportunity to Larry, you need to consider Mary. We're assuming Mary's his wife. <laughs> yeah. That's why I, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure you consider her, like Bob said. Um, next, it says consider the value of ongoing training as a requirement for continued employment. So absolutely, this is something that, like we talked about just a moment ago for basic, consider having this as something that you, they must also do in order to continue. It gives the right message to this candidate. Hey, look, you know, not only is this a benefit and part of your basic compensation that you're always going to get ongoing training, but it's also a requirement for continued employment. I would want to hear that if I was a superstar, because that means that you've got a team of really exceptional people. They're always going to be the best. Yeah, and your customers are certainly going to like hearing it, too, when they realize that just like doctors and, and dentists and attorneys, that your guys are mandated to have ongoing training, which is really, really cool. We're going to change gears now. Now, the first thing you gave them was oxygen. You put a roof over their head, not a great roof, but a roof over their head. Now let's talk about how they could get a really great roof, how they could really earn, you know, go up with their earnings. A couple different things that they could do. Number one, they could, they could earn additional income. Uh, through what we call individual productivity, or they could earn additional income through team productivity. And we're going to take just a minute, and we're going to look at both of those and give you some uh, what we might like to call thought starters here on this end. So let's do this, Doris. How about, uh, how about this one first up? Yes, yeah, so considerations for this opportunistic income where they have the opportunity to do a really great job with income. Uh, always consider this. This is one of the most important pieces to employee management and to um, causing people to perform. The behavior you get is the behavior you reward. When you're putting together your opportunistic income plans, consider what do you want? Do you want more production? Do you want team spirit? You want happy customers? You want a uh, few comebacks, <laughs> a really low comeback ratio? You want regular training and development? How are you going to incentivize or reward those behaviors that you desire? Well, you need to build them into your your compensation plan. There you go. So as an example, let's say with tax, the things that you really need to consider is, like Doris said so well, what is the behavior? What are you looking to do? Well, you're looking for billable hours, I assume. You're looking for what we call happy cars. Happy cars in our language means comeback, no comeback, the absence of comeback. And you're looking for happy people. Happy people aren't necessarily happy cars. Happy car is a smiley face car, like the car that you see at the gas pump, you know, the little <laughs> smiley car. With the eyelashes? Yeah, with the eyelashes. Yeah. yeah. The happy so. people are the, the happy people are the people that don't have like grease prints or, you know, or, or hand prints on their car or whatever. That's the happy people. And the car is fixed right the first time. That's going to be a happy person too, you know. So when, when it comes to tax, you need to consider how you're going to incentivize these items. Number one, billable hours. Number two, happy cars. Number three, happy people. And of course, with ASC certifications, with their advancements, how you can incentivize that as well. If you keep their eye on those balls, you know what's going to happen. You're going to get those kind of results. If you incentivize those kind of results, you know what you're going to get the results that you're looking for in the growth and profitability of your business. Now, let's change gears here. And underneath, whoops, it says, ensure you have safeguards and balance in place. What this means is don't just incentivize billable hours without having a safeguard that in order for them to earn that additional billable hour to income, they have to have a certain level and not, not go beyond a certain threshold of warranty claims. 
or customer complaints. They have to have that certain threshold met. So they got to reach all the markers in order to receive the added added bonus or the added added benefits. With advisor stores, consider these things: sales. You want to incentivize sales, of course. Mm -hmm. But happy people and gross profit at the same time. Sales are, are meaningless unless we've got thrilled people at the other end and then we're able to build value and, and keep our GP where it needs to be, right? Don't oh, shop owners? Yeah. I know you're nodding your head. <laughs> Ensure that you have safeguards and balances in place there as well. So, you know, they're not they you have to do the same thing that Bob just outlined with your service advisors as well, considering these. Um, these markers that you want them to hit. Yeah, I sure do. And how about this one, Doris? And with your entire team, consider sales, billable hours, gross profit, happy cars, happy people, <laughs> and five-star reviews, and consider some sort of a team incentive that you could offer if the team meets the goal. Mm -hmm. So this is a really great way to get everybody working together. It allows for team spirit and those things that we want to foster in our company. Yeah, it works like a champ. Our clients that have adhered to this, that are taking the ball and running with it, the results that they're getting are absolutely outstanding in every one of the key indicator performance areas. So don't hesitate on this one, guys and gals. So element number one is basic compensation, the oxygen. Element number two is opportunistic income, giving them the opportunity to earn a higher income. Element number three is exemplary performance rewards that we're looking at here, Doris. And this says rewards for cont contributions outside of the scope of their job responsibilities. This is huge. This means if you have an employee that does something that's above and beyond his J-O-B or her J-O-B, you need to consider rewarding them for it. The same is true if they do something for the community. Then what are you going to do to reward them for that? So here are a couple of thought starters that you can consider when, they, when it comes to this. Yes, yeah, so considerations for exemplary performance reports, uh, rewards, excuse me, provide a share Provide a share of any realized savings, Bob. Yes. There you go. That's, yeah. that's a winner, right? That's a winner. So as an example, you have a, a tech that comes to you and says, hey, Bob, I got an idea. You know, one of the things I couldn't help but notice is you're doing this with your advertising campaigns. Have you ever thought about doing this with your advertising campaigns? You go, whoa, man, that's really a great idea. And that turns into a savings. Share some of that savings with him. The behavior you get. The behavior you reward. There you go. So consider consider the value in sharing those uh, sharing those savings with them. Here's another one. This is a great one, you guys. Reward your technicians for their referrals. If they refer a new customer to you, consider giving them a percentage, a small percentage of all the repairs that that person has done at the shop for the first 90 days or whatever you want to put in place. What a great way to get them referring people to, to the company. Yeah, this yeah. is huge. Love that. All of you that are shop owners, and if you have technicians that are not referring customers to you, there's a number of reasons that it could be. Obviously, they could be doing side jobs. Well, if they're doing side jobs, you have to ask yourself, why aren't they getting the opportunities that they need working with you? Why are they going home and busting their butt working on cars instead of having the opportunity to work with you, be more productive, and then go home and enjoy their, their personal life after hours instead of working on cars? Number two, there's no reward for them to do it. If they're going to recommend somebody to you, how do they win? The behavior you get is the behavior that you reward. So when it comes to your technicians, what a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. And they also get the car to work on, too. Yes. You assign the car to them. They get a commission check. It's, it's a win in every regard to do this. Yeah, that's, that's a, good, a great one. Yeah, don't hesitate on this one, guys. Don't hesitate. How about this one, Doris? And never forget that money is not the best motivator. Yes, it is important, but the best motivator, according to every study out there, praise and recognition, are certainly the top two. So you got to focus in on those things and make sure that those are a part of your compensation and incentive programs. Perhaps those are the unwritten ones, right, you guys? But they're extremely critical. Yeah, well said, Doris. And always, in all cases, consider uh, consider rewards that have a go-home value. And what we're suggesting there is if, if this technician or advisor, let's say in a technician is an example that works with you, his family, whatever his family might mean, whatever that language might mean, he lives with his parents or or he's married, or he has a girlfriend, whatever that might mean. You know, is there something that you could do to have a go-home value? Is there some kind of reward that you could give him a dinner certificate where he could take his family out to dinner, where he could take his kids to a theme park, or, or go to the movies that weekend? Mm -hmm. Something that, could, that can touch the hearts and souls of the people that are in his life, not just in the people that are in the work environment with you as well. This is huge. And again, our clients that have grabbed onto this and really ran with it have seen the outstanding results with this too. Mm -hmm. yes. so, so number one, basic compensation. Number two is opportunistic income. Number three is rewarding them for out of the box, things that they do that are above and beyond the call of duty for them. And then we get into security doors, it looks like, right? Yes, and then number four, 
uh, make sure to provide your people with a sense of security. Um, a simple way, uh, very basic. Make sure that everyone in the company has business cards, your technicians as well. I mean, that might seem self-explanatory, but a lot of people, technicians don't have them. Well, you know what, that makes them feel a very big part of the company. It makes them feel valued and rewarded and, and more secure in the position that they're in. So that's a simple one you can quickly pull the trigger on. Next, retirement programs, absolutely. Um, you really um, owe it to yourself and to the people that work with you to, to offer this uh, at a certain point in their employment. And further integration into the decision-making process. Allow your people to be part of the decisions, bring them together, ask for their input. That will also make them feel very secure and give them some, I think the next bullet point might even be, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. leadership, give them leadership. Yeah. which also leads into security. So yeah, these are all huge, huh, Doris? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you guys need to grab those for yeah. sure. If you're not already doing all these things, make sure to implement them ASAP. Yeah, these are huge. So when it comes to security, some of the considerations, some of the things that you might want to at least consider, many of the younger guys and gals mm -hmm. today, as you know, are not savers. Unfortunately, some of the older guys and gals too, but certainly the younger ones are not savers. So providing them with any kind of retirement program really is a reflection of your culture. It shows that you care about them, not just in a moment, but you care about them in the grander scheme, the bigger picture of their life. You're helping discipline them and teach them a life lesson that they may very well not have gotten when they were younger and when they were at home. So this is huge. And how about this one, Doris? And speaking with your employees, ensure that they're all familiar with your long-term goals. So, you know, make sure that they see the future, those conversations about what's happening, what's to come, what the vision looks like down the road, how they may be integrated into that, what some of those opportunities may look like for them down the road if, if they're still with you in five, six, seven, ten years, right? Yeah. So um, those conversations, make sure to keep them going. And certainly when you're hiring somebody, talk about the long-term goals. Yeah, it's very critical. Huge, huge, huge. And Doris, what about tenure? Now, we're talking about reward for tenure not loyalty. There's a reason that we choose the word tenure, not loyalty. I believe that the word loyalty should not be used when you're referring to your customers or your employees because I think what you're doing is you're setting your, we're setting ourselves up for failure if we do that. Loyalty belongs, from my point of view, in regard to your family, your spirituality, your nation, but not in the world of business. I think we need to never rest on our laurels or we need to work every day to earn this from our clients. So when it comes to their tenure with us, retirement programs, again, Doris, Yes, for people that have achieved tenure, celebrate it this way. Great retirement programs, additions to retirement programs, celebrations and dinners that you could do for them, plaques, awards, et cetera. These are all great ways to reward tenure. Yeah, and here's some thought starters for you. Number one, one of the things that you need to always consider doing whenever you're recruiting is make sure that your guys and gals know that it's not going to be just a vertical straight, a straight line for them. It's a lattice, not a ladder. How they're going to grow with your company is going to depend on where their talents and drives and skills are. So you might have somebody that you hire as a tech, and he says, well, you know, can I someday become a master tech? Sure you could, but you might be a manager of our business someday. You might, who knows, you might be opening up a second satellite store for us. So provide your guys with a ladder, uh, or a lattice, I should say, more so than a ladder. And provide them with plaques and recognition. Remember we talked about praise and recognition? This is absolutely uh, essential. Provide them with additional vacation time. Perhaps they've had two and you're going to give three for tenure. Uh, that is something that uh, you should definitely grab. And allow them to play an active role in your decision-making process. We talked about this a bit before, but certainly uh, one other great way to reward tenure. Yeah, for sure. Now, when it comes to leadership, guys and gals, this is a subject to all of these uh, we could speak on for a long time because they're you know, they're, they're so important, they're so vital to your success, but we have a limited amount of time, so some of these we're going to have to be pretty, pretty quickly going through. One is you need to make sure that you provide vision uh, for the entire organization. Let this candidate know that this is your J-O-B as a business owner. Let them know that you're going to help them with career and personal growth development as well. Let them know that you're going to provide them with an environment where they're always going to have a voice within your organization. So one of the ways that you can do that, Doris, can you help us with this? Yes. Okay, so during your interviews, uh, build credibility in your culture and style of leadership by explaining your use of what we call the elite 50, 25, 25 employee review process. This is a great way to provide leadership. Let me just quickly explain what this means. This means that during the review that you're going to have with your employee, 50% of the time is spent reviewing them, you reviewing them. 25, the first 25 is that employee reviewing the company on what the company can do better, and the last 25 is the employee reviewing you 
or their superior as to what you could do better to be a better leader, manager. And initially they may resist this, but just understand that as they understand this is a part of your culture, it'll really give them that uh, voice and help their, them to feel important and very key to the company. Don't hesitate on this one, huh, Doris? That's a good one. Don't hesitate on this, guys and gals. Move forward on this. So, guys and gals, these are the six elements of a really great, well-designed compensation incentive program. So, let's talk about bringing it all together. Number one, make sure that your pay scales and all the related requirements are presented in easy to read and easy to understand format. So, when you are explaining it to Larry or Mary or whoever, they get it. You know, it can't be so complex where they don't understand it. And number two, what about this one, Doris? This is pretty big too, isn't it? Definitely. Create a take-home package. It's also easy to understand for the applicant uh, that outlines all the benefits of the compensation and incentive program so they can take it home, sit down over the dinner table, and talk to their family about uh, the benefits of working with your company. Yeah, so think about that. Before we get on to the Q&A here, guys and gals, give some thought to that, all right? If you've ever attempted to recruit somebody and if you made them a job offer, and the following day or two days later, they called you back and they rescind the offer. They say they decided to stay where they're at or whatever. You know what it could have been? They went home with a lot of great things that they heard from you. But you know what? If those weren't written down mm -hmm. or they could reflect on it, and, if it, you know, the argument when it's in writing, it's for real. If you just say it, did I really hear this or really hear that? And you know when they walk in the door, if they got a mom or a spouse in their life, the first thing that that person's going to ask them is, well, what are they going to pay you? And if they say, well, they're going to start me at $25 an hour, then maybe the deal is done already. She's going to, they're going to end it right there because they don't get to hear about all the other wonderful benefits. So put together a package that they could take home, that they could look at, and they could uh, share with the other family members. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Question and answer time, Q&A. We would love to help you in every way that we can. So um, let's take a minute. We have our dear friend, Sarah. She works with us here at the office, and we've asked her to, Jot questions down, actually have them ready. She doesn't have to jot them down, but she's got them ready to, uh, to bring to us. Yeah. So with there, that yeah, said. Type them in, type them in guys. Type Go them in. Field, find that little question box. Type in the questions is all that you need to do. Okay, and, now we have some. And, and then, yeah, here comes some. Yeah, here you go. She's all right. Right, yeah, right she there. Thanks, some. Sarah. Okay, yeah, thank you. And uh, she's going to be bringing in more questions. We'll answer them as, as well as we can. So, Doris, what, what do we have here? What did she give us? Okay, so let's see here. Okay, uh, first one, let's see. What? Your take on guarantee of hours. You would like somebody would like to know our take on guaranteeing hours? Yeah, I'd be more than happy to answer that one yeah. if you'd like. Sure. You know, when it comes to guarantees, a lot of shop owners will say 40 hour week, they'll say I'll guarantee it 30 hours or whatever. You know what? All that that's doing is that's an economic guarantee. Forget the word hours. All that you're telling them is if they're thirty dollars an hour, thirty hours, you're guaranteeing them nine hundred dollars. That's all that you're doing. The thing that you might want to consider, if that's your mindset, the thing that you might want to consider is guarantee them cars, not hours. That puts the onus, the burden of responsibility on them to produce, to really work for that money. And what does that mean? That means that if your ARO is, if you have like, let's say your ARO is, uh, or your average repair is three hours per car, mm -hmm. and if a guy is looking for 30 hours a week guarantee, tell him you'll guarantee him 10 cars. Mm -hmm. You'll ensure that he has 10 cars that week. And if he doesn't, then you'll pay him the difference between those. But it's up to him then to find that work on those cars. Lots of guys have taken the ball and ran with this, and lots of guys really love it because it, it puts the, the technician to not just rest on his laurels and go, okay, well, I'm going to get paid this week whether or not I find anything on this car or do any inspections or not. Right, yeah, that was a great question. Great stuff. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Find the hard ones, and then you answer the hard ones, Doris. Sure. Uh, this one says, I pay to train my t mechanics uh, regularly, and when people leave, that's very frustrating. <laughs> Yes, that's a, a great point, certainly. You know, I would say that is hard. You know, you invest in your people, and, you know, unfortunately, I think we can sometimes uh, expect that loyalty in return, which, like Bob said, that doesn't exist in business. We've got to regularly earn them. So, I, you know, just a thought that pops into my head with this one is the only thing worse than training them and having them leave on you is not training them and having them Stay, right? So training well, is every yeah yeah. Who's gonna argue? Who's gonna I mean, who in the audience now wants to argue with Doris over that? Right? Nobody does, right? Yeah. Why would you want to do that? 
Um, so hopefully that's helpful. You know, keep that in mind. We call it this the four T's of managing people. If you've got somebody that isn't doing what needs to be done within your company, the very first thing you have to ask yourself as a manager and a leader is, have I given them the proper training to be successful? If the answer is no to that, then how can you expect them to be great or to perform to the level you're requesting? So training is absolutely essential, and we need to make sure that we are regularly providing that for our people, you guys. So. Yeah, so great true. though. Good question. Hey, George, I know that we're I know that we're on a, a tight time schedule. It looks like we got a couple minutes left. Here, look at this one. Okay. Yeah, right yeah, here. yeah. There's another. Okay. How do I determine how much to pay as a guarantee? Mm. Yeah, um, that's great. As a rule of thumb, I'd say 80% of what they should be earning is probably a good uh, marker for that. So, you know, where should that line be? You've got to consider your company goals, that's what great. the position should warrant. And, uh, you know, you've got to make sure that there's a certain time of the year, too, where that guarantee is no longer in place. In other words, yeah. if you've guaranteed them they could earn $90,000 in a year as a technician, and they actually meet that mark by month nine, that's great. That means they're a performer. They're doing what needs to be done. Um, then that guarantee may stop in October. Um, and then they're just earning what they earn off of their their, their yeah so when you're yeah so when you're like Doris says when you're putting out mm -hmm. these guarantees we're a supporter and and paying guarantees and and decent guarantees too we're right. supporter in that because it gives them the peace of mind of knowing that you have the confidence in your company that's what it does mm -hmm. and like Doris says if you have a tech let's say for an example a tech is uh, uh, let's 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 do some real numbers here that you could probably get your heads around all right let's say an eighty thousand dollar a year tech all right, and you give them a guarantee of uh, eighty percent of that, so sixty, you know, sixty-four hundred or so. So what you're going to do then is you're going to say, well, look, I will, I will guarantee you this much during the year. I will guarantee you this year that you're going to earn sixty-five thousand dollars a year. You should earn way more than that, but I will guarantee you that you're going to earn sixty-four thousand dollars a year, and that's going to equate to let's say twelve hundred dollars a week, as an example. Now, that does not mean that every week he's going to get $1,200 every week for 52 weeks because your guarantee isn't the $1,200 a week. Your guarantee is that he's going to earn six, at least $64,000. Now, if halfway through the year, two-thirds of the way through the year, he's at $80,000 that he's earned, there's no reason for you to continue giving him a guarantee every week because he's already he's already far the, past the, it. Yeah. the guarantee that you gave him. So let them know it's an annual guarantee that you're providing them, an annual. I will guarantee you that if you're with us, you're with us, and you should be. I certainly hope that you're able to do what needs to be done. At the end of the year, you're going to earn at least this much. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to pay you this much every week until your income goes to this, gets to this $64,000 amount. Now, if you do this, then when he goes home, then his spouse or mom or whoever isn't going to be concerned about, gee, you know, what if there are no cars or what if there's no opportunity for you to earn right. the money that you need to earn. Right. So when it comes to guarantees, we're, we're supporters of those. Just if you hire the right people, if, if you do the right homework, if you hire, and we'll help you with that within the next two sessions, hire the right people, then the concerns that you have about the guarantees are going to really just pretty much evaporate. Yes. So, guys, we wanted to start with, uh, you know, your compensation yeah. and incentive programs, because yeah. if you do that, you're going to know how to approach these people you're interviewing. Yeah, so right? let's do this, George. We're, we're almost out of time, and we don't want to overstay our welcome with you guys. So why don't we do this? Uh, we know that there are other questions that are coming in. So uh, as Sarah's collecting those, we will follow up with you, all of you that are sending in questions, and we'll, we'll certainly answer those for you. So let's talk about the next steps, what you need to do, okay, yes. as we move forward. Yeah, so watch for a link to the recorded session. That is going to be coming to you, like Bob said, within more than 24 hours. Yep. yep. And you can come back and watch this. Mm -hmm. Watch for the recording and ensure that you create a compensation and incentive program that will attract and retain the superstars. So go back to these bullet points and get to work, guys. Yeah, there <laughs> you go. There you go. And you can use the GoToWebinar link you use today for the remaining two modules. So if you just want to save that, great. If you want to wait, you're going to get another one as a reminder anyways. But this is the exact same link for next week and the following week's session. Yep, sure is. Sure is. And uh, resources available to you. We are here to help. If you have any questions, any thoughts, any comments, uh, we would love to have the opportunity to answer additional questions you may have in regards to today's content. Please feel free to give us a call at 800 204 3548, or you can email in to contact at eliteworldwide.com, and we'll be happy to get you an answer that way as well. So yeah. thank you so much, you guys. Join yeah. us again next week. Yeah.
same time, same channel? Yeah, thanks for joining us. And thanks to the good people at Jasper, too, for putting this session on. It was very kind of them to do that. And like Doris says, we really look forward to seeing you guys at the next session next week. Stay tuned. Thanks. See you guys. Bye-bye.